In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation using the annihilator method. So the very first step in the annihilator method is to find the complementary function. In other words, you pretend that your differential equation is equal to zero, and then you solve it. So I'm gonna set it equal to zero, and to solve it, we'll find the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So basically you just match the powers. So this is the second derivative, so it's m squared, plus, and then here it's just 25. Whenever there's a y, you just put the number down. And so we get zero. To solve this, we'll subtract the 25. So m squared equals negative 25. Then we'll take the square root of both sides. And so we get m equals uh, plus or minus uh, 5i. So we have solutions that are complex conjugates. This is really zero plus or minus 5i. And so recall that whenever you have answers of the form alpha plus or minus beta i, the solution, which we'll denote by y sub c, is given by c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c sub 2 e to the alpha x sine of beta x. In our problem, alpha is 0, which is really nice because e to the 0 was 1. It's not going to be uh, anything to worry about. And then beta is 5. So our comp it's called, this is called the complementary function. This is equal to c1 cosine of 5x plus c2 sine of 5x. I'm going to put this in a box because this is important. And... Um, e to the 0 x is e to the 0, so it's 1, so, so it's gone. All right, the next step um, is to write this using differential operators. So we can do that as follows. Because it's a second derivative, I'm going to put a d squared here. And here there's no derivatives, I'm just going to put the 25 like this. Then I'm going to put parentheses, and I'll put the y here. And you could think about this, uh, and it should make sense d squared applied to y, so that means we take the derivative twice, so that's the second derivative, and then 25 times y is 25. And then here we have 6 sine x. Okay, now we need to think, what operator can we use to annihilate the right-hand side? So recall, in order to annihilate sine beta x, or even cosine beta x, you can use d squared plus beta squared. This is an annihilator for both of these functions. In our example here, beta is 1, right, because there's a 1 here in front of the x, so we can use d squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and apply this to both sides of our de. So we have d squared plus 1 applied to the left-hand side, so d squared plus 25, and then y, and then over here we have d squared plus 1 applied to 6 sine x. On the left hand side, whenever you have operators like this and there's no like variables inside the operators and stuff, it's like an x in front of the d squared, they're all constants, you can treat them like polynomials. So let's just do that. So d squared times d squared is d to the fourth. d squared times 25 is 25 d squared. 1 times d squared is d squared. 1 times 25 is 25. And we still have y. This right-hand side is 0. That's because this annihilates this. That's what it means for an operator to annihilate a function, right? In general, an operator L annihilates a function y if it's equal to 0. So this is our L. This is our annihilator. We've annihilated uh, six times the sine of x. It's fun to say it, you know, annihilate. <laughs> uh, let's combine like terms here. So this is d to the fourth. 25d squared plus d squared is going to be 26d squared plus and then 25 and then we have our y equal to zero. So now we have like a new differential equation. So in theory, if you wanted to, you could write this in like the regular de form. You don't have to. 
Uh, basically, we're going to solve this, but if you wanted to, you could. I'll just do it for fun. It would look like this. The fourth derivative plus 26 times the second derivative, just so you see it, plus 25y. So this is a DE. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this. So how are we going to solve it? Well, it's homogeneous, so we can find the characteristic equation or auxiliary equation. So fourth derivative gives us m to the fourth. Then here we get 26m squared. And then here we get uh, plus 25, and that's equal to 0. I think this factors. Yeah, 1 times 25 is 25. Interesting. I haven't done this problem, so every step is a big surprise. This will be m squared plus 1 times m squared plus 25. And that's equal to 0. You have a product equal to 0. You set each factor equal to 0. So m squared plus 1 equals 0. It's working out quite nicely, actually, this problem. And then m squared plus 25 uh, equals 0. So here we get m squared equals negative 1. And here we get m squared equals negative 25. Going kind of fast now. Taking the square root on the left, we get m equals plus or minus i. So that's of the form 0 plus or minus 1 times i. We're going to need that. And over here, taking the square root, we get m equals plus or minus 5i. And that's of the form 0 plus or minus 5i. So now we can apply this formula, which is still on the screen, it's up here, to each of these. So I'm going to come back up here because I feel like I'm going too low. So y is equal to, so let's do this one first. So all the alphas are 0, so it'll just be c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x plus c3 cosine 5x, that's the second, that's from the 5, plus c4 sine 5x. All right, beautiful stuff. And oh, look at this. This is, this is where the magic happens. This is it, this is the key step. If you made it this far, awesome. If you're still with me, it's amazing. Look at this, this, this is yc. What? Yeah, so YC shows up. And then what's this? Ah, well, you know, you know what this is, right? This must be YP. Remember, the final answer is of the form YP plus YC. So what this method does is it produces YP for you. So if you're familiar with differential equations and problems like this, and you haven't seen the annihilator method, and you've seen other methods, and other methods you have to guess the form of YP. Whereas in this method, all of this math produces YP for you, so it eliminates all of the guesswork. So um, I, I feel like it's a little bit more work. <laughs> we had to do all this, but it's kind of cool that it just kind of like shows up. So this means that our YP must be equal to A cosine X plus B sine X. So this must be YP because any solution of of this DE should also be a solution of, of the original. So um, so now we just have to plug this into our DE. So I'm going to write down our DE again. I believe it was I believe it was y double prime uh, plus 25y equals 6 sine x. Let me just scroll up and make sure I wrote down the right problem. Uh, yeah, that's it. So now at the next step, uh, we just take the derivative and plug it into here to find a and b. So we have yp. Let's find yp prime. So yp prime. I'll I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it here. Yp prime. The derivative of a cosine is negative sine. So this will be negative a sine x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So this will be plus b cosine x. Then we do it again, right? Because we need the second derivative. So yp double prime. Derivative of sine is cosine. So this is negative a cosine x. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so minus b sine x. All right, let's plug it in. So I'll write the y double prime, which is here, uh, over here. Let, let me just check my work really quick. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then derivative, okay, it looks good. I just hate to mess up, you know, so far into this problem. <laughs> so this is negative a cosine x minus b sine x, and it's very easy to mess up. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you know, plus 25, and then plug in yp, this is a cosine x, plus 
plus b sine x. Good stuff. And that's equal to 6 sine x. So what did I do? I just, I just plugged it in, right? I plugged in y. This is our y. I got that from here, right? That's that one. And then this is, this is the y double prime. That's from here. All right, let me use a brighter color. Uh, let's go ahead and distribute this 25. So you have negative a cosine x minus b sine x plus 25a cosine x uh, plus 25b uh, <laughs> 25b <laughs> sine x and that's equal to 6 sine x. Okay, so we're going to use the method of equating coefficients. Let's focus on the sine x terms first. So sine x. So on the left hand side, what are the coefficients of sine x? Boom, negative b and uh, 25b. Oh, we could have just combined like terms. Actually, let's just do that first before we even do this because I have a bad habit of just jumping to equating. Negative a cosine x plus 25a cosine x is 24a cosine x. And I have a habit of just jumping into equating coefficients. Negative b plus 25b is 24b. Sine x. And that's equal to 6 sine x. It wouldn't have been wrong. I would have ended up with negative b plus 25b, you know, equals, you know, 0 or uh, equals 6, which is 24b. So it's the same thing. So here, using matching, 24b is equal to 6. So b is equal to 1 fourth, right? Divide by 24, you get um, 6 over 24, which is 1 fourth. And here, 24a is equal to 0 because there's no cosine term over here. It's really plus 0 cosine x. So 24a must be, must be 0. So a is 0. So that means that yp, our yp, which was up here, okay, our a is 0, so our b is 1 fourth, so it's 1 fourth sine x. All right, so our final answer is yc plus yp. So y equals, I forgot what yc was, it's way up here. C1 cosine 5x, C2 sine 5x. So it's C1 cosine 5x plus C2 sine 5x. And then plus yp, which is 1 fourth sine x. And that should be the final answer. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.